I'm just back from spending some time in Canada where I had the fantastic opportunity to spend some time with author and personal trainer John Little. And John very kindly gave me a copy of his new book, The Time Savers Workout. And since I've got back to the UK, I've had the opportunity to read the book and I want to briefly discuss it with you now. Um, two things really stood out to me in the book. Number one, how minimalist the approach to exercise put forward in the book is, which is appropriate considering the book is called The Time Savers Workout. And the second thing is a theory that uh, John has put across for the first time, certainly that I've read, uh, called the conservation of energy phenomenon. So first of all, minimalist routines. The workouts or the workout protocol recommended in this book consists of, let's say, three to five multi-joint exercises performed once a week or even up to once every 10 days. Um, so it is a very minimal approach to high effort or high intensity resistance training. It's going to only take somebody who performs the routines in this book somewhere between 9 and 12 minutes, you know, once a week. So a very uh, low volume, low frequency, but high effort approach. The second thing, as I mentioned, that really stood out to me is the conservation of energy phenomenon. And what this speaks to is that as humans, we're hardwired to seek out plentiful energy and to consume energy pretty much as much as we can in the form of food, nutrition and sustenance. And that speaks to times where there would have been food scarcity in our past. And at the same time, the flip of that is that we are also hardwired to look to not expend that energy in a high effort manner. And so high intensity exercise is kind of not instinctive if we don't have to, if there's not that pressing motivation of uh, uh, a tiger hunting you down. Uh, but you've got to sprint away from. There's not this sort of innate desire in humans to expend very high effort exercise, which kind of explains why sort of dance around the fitness classes, volume pumping weights is often more popular than a high intensity approach to exercise. The other thing that the conservation of energy phenomenon speaks to is that the body gets very good at being efficient when it learns to perform something. So again, it's looking to expend the least amount of energy that it possibly can to perform a task. And John makes the case that this can even apply when you are performing high intensity resistance training, that there is a need um, from time to time to change up the protocol, to change up the application, to make the exercise again more metabolically demanding for the body. And so this is a, a fascinating chapter in the book that is a, a really uh, exciting read. I also enjoyed uh, John's chapters and discussion on the fitness industry, um, which is now a $60 billion a year industry in the US alone. Uh, the ineffectiveness of many different approaches to so-called exercise and how the exercise is like a coin. This is a great analogy he uses within the book. On one side, heads, you've got the potential for benefits such as um, increasing uh, the strength and functional ability of the body, um, increasing the uh, fiber size and the retaining fast twitch uh, muscle fibers and the metabolic pathways that support them. But the tails of that coin is that there's the uh, risk or potential for unnecessary wear and tear that can actually damage the body, damage the connective tissue, the joints, muscle tissue itself. And performing too much exercise too often or poor forms of exercise or dangerous forms of exercise can actually be uh, damaging to the human system. Um, 
I liked the chapter on genetics where it delves into why not everybody can be like their favorite athlete or look like a top bodybuilder or fitness model. Uh, and I liked so many other aspects of this book that came from a fresh slant in a, in a different way than I'd read about it before. It really is a book for 2019. Um, who's this book for? Well, is it for you if you know and have practiced high intensity training for years or decades? I am gonna say a big yes to that. Because of these fresh perspectives, these interesting ideas that are thrown out, it's gonna remind you of some perspectives you may have read about in the past and introduce you to thinking about things in a slightly different way. And I think that's always a huge value to get from a book. Uh, what about if you're completely new to resistance training or you're completely new to high intensity resistance training? Well, that's a definite yes for me there too because the book really builds from the ground up, talking about different approaches to exercise, talking about the fitness industry and the way many of us may have looked in the past to get ourselves into shape. And in terms of the exercise and the way it's presented itself, um, you've got very detailed explanations of how to perform the exercises, what the each routine looks like and how to perform different protocols as time goes by and to keep things fresh as with regards to the conservation of energy phenomenon that I mentioned earlier in, in the vid. Um, so yeah, beginners, experienced, it's a great book. Um, it very much complements Body by Science, which of course John Little was a co-author with Doug McGuff, and it complements uh, Mike Mentz's work as well. So Heavy Duty 2 in particular stands out as a sort of brethren book to this one. Um, I really enjoyed the book. It gets a definite thumbs up from me. Uh, read our blog post for the full review. And also, if you've got a copy of a book, if you've read it or you're planning on getting it and you do read it, let us know your thoughts on the book as well.